This is no ordinary tree house. This is a tree house used for healing and recovery. Want to know more? Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to MCPSS Community Connection, the show that brings real life learning and education to the community. I'm Marcy McNeil and today we're here at the Children's and Women's Hospital and many of us can experience taking our child to the doctor for their regular shot. Not always a good experience, but imagine having to bring your child here for a long-term stay. Many children can experience an emotional scar or trauma, but here at the Children's and Women's Hospital, they have programs set up that can help your young patient be comfortable, adjust, and put parents at ease. So today we're going to talk to administrators and staff here at Children's and Women's Hospital to explain to us some of the volunteer programs they have and most importantly the Class Act School. So I want you to meet one of the administrators today, Mr. Owen Bailey. Hi, Mr. Owen. Hey, how are you? Fine, how are you? I'm Thank great. You. Thank you so much for meeting with us today. We're just so thankful that you're here. Oh, this is great. I mean, this is a wonderful hospital. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, we do think it's a wonderful hospital. It's just an amazing place with a very talented and dedicated staff. And we're dedicated to the healthcare needs of both children and women. And so we serve uh, a population really about 200 miles around Mobile, so uh, wow. folks depend on us from uh, far and wide. Well, especially our children, the Mobile County is the largest in the, in Alabama, the largest school system, so I'm sure you see a lot of our children day in and day out. We do, and we're excited that we have a new pediatric tower, which we just moved into, wow. and, uh, and it's beautiful, it's very unique, uh, there's really, um, you know, uh, uh, nothing like this around as far as uh, being dedicated just for children. Um, and it's got uh, all of our inpatient services and a number of kind of community partnerships that uh, I think you're going to talk about today. Yes, can you kind of tell us a little bit about some of your volunteer programs that are here? I know you have the MAP um, program. Yes, we have the MAP Child and Family Life Program, um, and that's, uh, again, a lot of that comes from a partnership with the MAP family, uh, who support that program very generously. Um, and, um, and that program, along with our Class Act program, uh, in partnership with the Mobile County Public School System, all those partnerships and the team, that, the, the, the folks that work in those areas, uh, they impact lives every single day. And it's not just the child, it's that entire family that gets impacted. That's true, and speaking of impact, just a little note on the side, mm -hmm. you are a product of our Mobile County Public School Proud System. Proud to be a product of the Mobile School System. Um, <laughs> John Will, Hillsdale, and Shaw High School. So uh, great had a school. wonderful experience, and, and, uh, and it's a great system. So you can kind of relate when these parents come from the schools and they're kind of worried about will their child fall behind or what can they do? And what are some of the things that uh, your staff just tries to put them at ease at the beginning? I know it's just scary knowing that your child is ill. It is. We, we have one of the most dedicated staffs here that I've ever worked with, um, and our volunteer staff as well. Um, uh, in, in, the, in our child life program, the therapists and, the, uh, and then the teachers in the class act, um, they really care so deeply about the child and the, and the entire family. And they, that, that, that dedication and that, that drive they have to, to take care of that child and, uh, and, and they want to get that normalcy back to that family of, of, the, of what the school experience provides. And, uh, right. and, and, and that, that can make a huge difference um, in, the, in, 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 in that child's experience. And it, and it kind of, when you come in the hospital, it's easy to get uh, scared and there's a lot going on and, and very, a lot of apprehension. Right. Uh, and this program allows that uh, to kind of, it's kind of a grounding effect for the family. Well, we're going to talk more with the people in that program. This is a unique connection. I mean, not many states offer an actual educational program in their hospitals for right. school-aged children. It's very unique, and we are a unique hospital. There's really only, there's fewer than 10 freestanding children's and women's hospitals in the country. Wow. So we're unique in that regard. This partnership with the Mobile County Public School System is really one of the most important partnerships we have, and we're a hospital that has a lot of good, important partnerships. Um, the school system and this hospital work hand in hand 
in taking care of these families and these children. And uh, it's something we value tremendously. And we value your service and thank you so much for everything that you offer and just working with us so we can supply our students um, with continued education. Thank you again. Well, thank you for being here. I'm really glad you're going to spotlight some of these amazing people who work and volunteer in this hospital. That's right. When we get back, we're going to spotlight some of these amazing people. You will be um, amazed at what they do and really inspired. So stay tuned. I saw Mr. Tillman's class. Just that quick little five minutes I had with him made me think that I really wanted to uh, use small engines. I just love tinkering with them. Just a uh, gearhead. Graduating from the Career Tech Center has allowed me to better myself, make more money, be more informed about uh, the trade that I'm going to be in. I just feel like doing a trade is just better than working in an office or something. I have to be outside working with my hand or something. MCPSS Career Tech. Start your future today. Welcome back. We're here talking to Miss Kim, the program director of Class Act Program, and she's going to take us through the actual classroom here at the hospital. Tell us what um, a child will encounter from the morning to the afternoon. Yeah. This is the Class Act room, and our teachers are busy in the mornings with school. The children who are patients in our hospital, first thing in the morning, the teachers meet and have a staff meeting. And they'll greet and identify, uh, meet and identify who the patients are that are school age. Then the teachers make rounds. They'll go to the different rooms, and invite the children, tell the families about the school program, invite them down to, to um, the class act room. And when they come down here, the teachers will then contact their schools or teachers via email or through fax, requesting, letting the school know the patient's here, and requesting that the work be sent to the hospital for them to come. This is a wonderful room, Ms. Kim. It doesn't look like you're lacking in anything that an ordinary classroom would have. We, we've tried to give our patients everything that they would have in their classroom. We know that technology is very important today. And we want them to know that this, this is a real school. This is serious business. And because you're in the hospital does not mean that school services have stopped. So, And this is a brand new room for you, right? Brand new. We've been here almost two weeks now. Oh, that's great. It's wonderful. So over here we have a reading area. I mean, you have the books that the students can choose from to read. Right. And we've had some, assi uh, some assistance putting this together. So it's very updated and ready for the children. It's Miss Ann's library. Miss Ann's a big fan of books. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> She's got quite the obsession with books and reading. So um, she put that together. I see you have your supply kind of area we can't really see inside but the great area that you can keep supplies in so the students have crayons and all of that that they need Arts and crafts in the activity in the activity rooms but you know in the afternoons they'll do the painting and any kind of art supplies they can they can have and one of the best parts I know that every classroom that we have in Mobile County Public Schools you also have here in the class act which is your smart board. smart board. We love the smart board and the teachers can use it in the morning and then we also have used it to have PE for the children whenever they're um, not able to leave the hospital we can do the wee bowling or just dance and the kids Oh that's love great, that. great, that's wonderful yeah because the interactive is important and I know that they stress that a lot in our schools so they can continue to get that while they're here. Oh, and great. Of course, we, you know, we have the computers for the students to use so okay. they can access their, their schoolwork. And then, of course, we love to implement the use of iPads. Wonderful. And that's a new addition to our program for about, about, well, about two years now. We've been using iPads. Good. So when they come here, they're really not missing out. But you are also mobile. So there are students that may not make it into the wonderful Class Act program. Um, the classroom, what would you do then? How would you right. um, take the classroom to their hospital room? If, on most days, the majority of the students cannot come here. We'll have, they'll have the one-on-one. -on -one. We can, you know, sometimes average up to 10 in the classroom. In the afternoons, during the, when this turns into the activity room, the teachers have their classroom carts with their supplies, and they'll roll and do bedside activities at school with the children who can't come down. Okay, great. Ms. Kim, how do you connect with the teachers and find out exactly where this child is at, where you need to work in with the student, and or just get their daily homework. Um, they've been using email more recently to talk to the teachers. They, and they have, I actually will call the teachers and talk to them. Good, good. So it's it's really a partnership between the parent, the teacher, and the student. That's great. Um, how does the child usually adjust uh, when they first come in? Uh, do you have to kind of work with them through? 
uh, just jumping right in, or do you find that the students are eager to not miss out? Depends on the age of the student. <laughs> Often a surprise that on your sick day in the hospital, you've actually got school. It's not a day off. So, so, um, so you know, but you generally they're very, very um, excited to come to school in the morning. So we'll have them waiting outside the door while we're in staff meeting, waiting to come into school. So once they get down here, it's been a great break. It normalizes things for them. It gives them vision beyond the hospital. They know that this is not a permanent situation. What's important, you stay on track. So the kids, uh, I've yet to really see a kid who didn't like it. Oh, that's great. How many teachers do you have? We have three. We're hoping for an additional teacher in the fall. Okay. And how do you separate them to uh, meet everyone's needs? By age of children and by, by needs of children. We have um, Mary Day Landtap that serves as our high school, middle school teacher. And Bella would be our elementary and then preschool and special needs would be Christian Burian. So. Okay, great, perfect. How many do you how many children do you have maybe on an average? Can you even gauge? It's kinda hard. It's hard to gauge, it varies, which the teachers the teachers numbered. Now we could probably average twenty six students or more a day, but the teachers numbers vary. They could have twelve one day, you know, and a six the next. So it's going back and forth. It's always fluid. Wow. So this teacher would have to be very organized, very detail oriented, very and flexible. most importantly, very nurturing. Is that what you kind of look for when you're there? You know, they do have a, um, uh, they're in a position as a hospital teacher to, to have to spend, I think I'm going to say this, to be um, able to help a child through the social and emotional areas of being sick and to be able to educate through that. Right. So a lot of counseling is involved. Exactly. Well, I, when we come back, we would like to talk to one of your teachers about how they actually interact with the student and what they get out of this wonderful Class Act program. I'm home, and I love it. I'm home, I'm home, where I belong. It's always nice to come home, but many Americans are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making Home Affordable from the U.S. government has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home, I'm home, where I belong. Hi, we're back, and I am joined uh, by our hospital teacher, Ms. Kristen, and one of her students, Marquel. I'm lucky to be doing some Play-Doh activity with Marquel today, but Ms. Kristen, we wanted to ask you, how did you get involved in the Class Act program? I was so honored to um, come and work here, and my, my first step is many years ago, I fell in love with students with special needs. And um, over time, I learned and came to know that so many students with special needs do have medical illnesses or disabilities as well. And so I was a homebound teacher for Mobile County. Okay. And um, as a homebound teacher, sometimes my students were hospitalized. So I would come here to teach them, and I find, found out quickly that there were already wonderful teachers here who were checking on my students when they were hospitalized. And um, I just really respected and admired the work of the teachers that were already here. And so they um, needed another teacher because this hospital has continued to grow and become a very strong, um, a strong hospital for the Gulf Coast area, really. Mm -hmm. And so that is how I came to um, come here. And um, I just, it's been wonderful. Well, I can imagine, especially with students like Marquell, who would have thought when you're getting a teacher teaching degree that you would actually end up in the hospital uh, teaching? I didn't. <laughs> I, really, I really didn't think that. And I've loved every job that I've had. I've been a classroom teacher, homebound teacher, and now a hospital teacher. And I've really enjoyed every aspect of teaching. Um, then when I went back to school to get a master's degree in counseling, this kind of 
became the perfect partnership with my education background and counseling because this is a little bit different and you do interact very closely with the families and the, the children who can be going through some pretty challenging times. That's a good segue because how do you talk to the parents and how do you assure them that you, their child really is not missing out? You have the credentials, you have the uh, source. How do you let them know, hey, we're doing the same thing, just right. in a different area? Right. We do. We, we meet with the families and we, we talk to them about, you know, where we're coming from and that we are part of Mobile County and that usually makes them feel very at ease. And we let them know that we are going to be in close connection with the teachers. And, um, and then, you know, it, the, it transitions usually pretty quickly because children, even those who are in pain or are very ill, the thing that they like the least in the world is to be bored. Right. That is what children <laughs> cannot stand to be bored. And so after they come down once to the classroom, mm -hmm. they usually want to come back. Sometimes the difficult part is getting them down here that first time. Right. And then they'll beat you to the door in the mornings <laughs> after that. So um, the parents are very, um, we meet amazing families who have the best attitudes and they they just want the best for their children and they know that education is is the key to that so right it's been wonderful to meet all the families when you bring a child in for the first time do you have to determine how long they're going to be how long the hospital stay is uh, where they are does it take a lot of research it does we we tr we keep in close contact with their doctors and nurses to get an idea of if we're looking at a quick stay or a long stay. And then from there, we adjust um, their school day and what works best for them. Um, some, many of our students are here for months. And so that would, that would mean you are the primary teacher. That, that becomes a very serious role um, because you can be the difference in them going on to the next grade or not. Yeah. And then some sometimes you're serving more as a tutor and a way to help them cope with the day. Um, first thing when we get them down here is we want them to feel safe, first of all. Mm -hmm. You know, we want them to feel safe in this environment. And um, so we may pull things out like Play-Doh right. or get out an iPad. What kind of things do you like? You yeah. know, what, what do you do in your spare time? What do you do for fun? So we like to build that rapport <laughs> first. Mm -hmm. And um, and then from there, we start sliding in the school. <laughs> and then it goes from there. Right. Well, I'm going to slide on over here and talk to Miss Ann, who started the program. Marquel, it's been a pleasure doing our Play-Doh with you. I've made you a little caterpillar, I believe that's what it is. Does it look like it? Okay, well, you finish out and make something really special for me while I go over here and talk to Miss Ann, who started the program. And Miss Ann, you're over here with the student now, but I want you to tell us, why did you start this wonderful program? What made you develop Class Act? Well, years ago, um, 26 or a lot more years ago, I was in graduate school, worked on my doctorate for um, at Auburn, and we had to have some project, and so I had had an undergraduate degree in child life, which was working with hospitalized children, and so it was very natural for me to, um, we, to, to look at how we could better serve children who were hospitalized and so I decided that we would start re I would research hospital schools and I found out this was about 28 years ago that there were hospital schools in the United States but not very many and there weren't there of course wasn't one here and so by luck I got involved with Kathy O'Keefe who's a professor at South Alabama and she won't take no for an answer. And so Kathy <laughs> O'Keefe and I went to the school board and went around to Montgomery. And I had the research about hospital schools. And she had the personality to say, well, we're not taking no for an answer. And so after several years of working, we were able to get this school program started. And it's been 24 years. This is our 24th school year. Wow, congratulations. I know you have to be proud. I, As a parent myself, I mean, I'm just this thrill to have something like this if ever you need it and mm -hmm. how does it make the parents feel I mean what what do you get from them because I know that they're so thankful that their child may not have to repeat a grade 
just for something that they couldn't help. Well, really, for those that is is a very big help. To, it's a win-win situation for everyone. And for, from the parents' perspective, it's nice because before we had hospital schools, the parent had to be a t tutor for their sick child. And they would have to be in charge of going and getting their work from the school and all that. And when your child's sick, you know, it, you, it's hard to get to the school. And so that it's a, a relief for the parents that I can do that. But also, it's a relief for the parents that they don't have to be the tutor. Because if, you're, if you have a, a well child, it's hard to be the tutor for the well child. <laughs> And so it's really hard if your child's sick, and so that's my responsibility to try to ca to call the school, get the work, try to keep the child up with the work while they're here, oh, and wow. then communicate back to the school the needs of the child. If they're needing accommodations when they get back to school, no PE for several weeks or any special things, then I can help um, be the liaison from the hospital to the school instead of the mother having to handle everything. Then she can just concentrate on taking care of her sick child. Right, and the child getting better. Mm -hmm. 24 years is a long time, mm -hmm. so is this what you imagine? I mean, can you believe how much it's grown and all the technology now that you have that can help you better staying connected mm -hmm. with the school system and parents and what they need to get? Is this? I cannot believe more? it. I started out with a cart and it had dinosaur um, contact paper on it and we called it the dinosaur cart and it was in a closet and then I got one classroom and I was the only teacher and I had just a little patient room across from the tree house which was the playroom and then we got another teacher and then we got another teacher and now to have four rooms and this beautiful room can you it's, it's can. really uh, people uh, the, keep saying how do you feel about your new classroom and I just said you feel like you've died and gone to heaven to have this beautiful <laughs> classroom and not only is it beautiful but um, we have everyone in the hospital supporting us and in the school system supporting us with supplies and with more teachers and more help and it's just a joint program between the hospital and the Mobile County Public Schools that work together to make this a uh, um, wonderful opportunity for the children who are here and for us as teachers and for the staff because I think it helps the staff too to have the children in school right because we know that they get better when they're busy and distracted from pain exactly and when they're also um, relating to something that's normal to them mm -hmm. a normal routine well mm -hmm. you should feel very proud and we thank you for just coming up with this great idea and and taking the efforts to start it. This is this is wonderful. And when we get back, we're going to show you the tree house that Miss Ann referred to and talk a little bit more about the volunteer programs here at the Children's and Women's Hospital. So, what did your child eat at school today? Well, if you're looking for answers, we have them right here. I'm Suzanne Yates, the Food Service Director for the Mobile County Public School System, and I would like to invite you to join me for Cooking with Class, the child nutrition show from the Mobile County Public School System. Come with me as I go into the school cafeterias and talk to the folks who prepare the meals daily for our children. Join me as we go Cooking with Class. Welcome back. I'm here with Miss Rebecca, who is probably one of the most important people on staff because you help others volunteer. You're our volunteer coordinator. Tell us what that entails. Volunteers, um, all, we have our team program, our adult program, and also our college volunteers. The volunteers come into the hospital and can help in an area of different places. In our pediatric floors, our NICU, in our gift shop, as well as anything else we would need them to be if they need to do from the smallest thing to the biggest thing. And we I've already talked to some of your amazing staff including yourself but volunteers they they're really special too. Yes ma'am they are very special they're very special for the patients as well as for the families they can come in and be a bright light to the patient anything make them smile they can come in help them with their schoolwork also supportive for their families too because you know sometimes if it's they don't have anybody to talk to they could lean on a volunteer so it's also really great. Right and it's a great way for a parent or a family member who has had a child come in and they want to continue to help because they've seen what this hospital does for families. This yes. is a great way for them to continue? Absolutely. I know there are a number of volunteers that have had a personal experience with the hospital and have come back and 
decided to be a volunteer because of such wonderful staff and how great everyone was at the hospital to them. What better way to give than your time? Absolutely. And we teach that a lot in our schools. So I understand that you have a way for our students to also come and volunteer and not miss out on school, but um, gain service hours? Yes, ma'am. During the summer, we have a teen volunteer program that runs for the eight weeks over the summer. And they can come in and uh, they help also, they help our student, the pediatric floors, NICU, anywhere they would feel they would want to volunteer their time. And it lasts for the whole eight, eight weeks and they volunteer once a week, every week for four hours. And then at the end of the summer, we have a little party for them and celebrate just to thank them for donating their time. And a lot of the team volunteers come back and continue to volunteer. So that's always great. Which must be a wonderful thing because we're about to talk to Miss Katie. Yes. Thank you so much, Miss Rebecca, who decided to come back after volunteering. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. So tell us about your experience. You were a volunteer at first. Yes, ma'am. Um, I started volunteering in 2009, 2010, um, and then I actually started my internship um, last May here because of my volunteer hours that led me to want to do my internship here and then I got hired on as staff after my internship probably like two weeks after I finished. And as your job duties you get to do one of probably the best part of the whole hospital right. this wonderful treehouse. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about it and what, what it does for the um, Children's and Women's sure. Hospital? Sure. Well, um, this is actually a therapeutic playroom for our hospital and for our kids here. And uh, my degree is in therapeutic recreation. I'm certified in therapeutic recreation. And we also have child life specialists here as well and another recreational therapist. Um, but what we do, we focus on the child's psychosocial needs um, here in the hospital. We use play and recreation, you know, to make them comfortable. We use distractions during procedures. We use um, and we also help prepare them for procedures and one of the biggest things that we do here are community events um, which is huge because it helps normalize the experience that they're having here in the hospital so not only with our school but also we celebrate birthdays and holidays too. That's great that's a wonderful wonderful um, added why treehouse tell us why a treehouse why, why would that make a child feel at ease. Because it's fun. I mean, look, <laughs> look around. There's toys. There's right. a tree that you can go into. I mean, we have kids all the time that'll be in the classroom, you know, how much longer until I'm done with my work so I can go play in the tree house. <laughs> so, I mean, it's something that they can look forward to and it's a way for them to get out of the room too. So they're not just cooped up in their room all day long. This is great. And I, I love your story about how you ended up here as a job. But what would you advise other students who would be interested in coming here to volunteer? Here are just interested in the field of nursing or hospital or therapeutic what would you advise them? Um, I would say definitely give it a try and I mean volunteering was the best thing for me because if I hadn't have done it I would have never known that I loved it um, that I would want to work here one day or even start an internship here anything like that so volunteering was definitely a great experience I got to know all of the people here and I got to know a lot of really great kids too well Miss Katie you do a really great thing and I really appreciate you talking with me today thank you uh, when we get back we're going to sum up our visit here at Children's and Women's Hospital and I'm going to go have a visit in the treehouse. Stay tuned. We are this close. We are this close. Of our mountain to Making history. This close to changing the world. We are this close. We are this close. This close to making sure no child suffers a crippling disease ever again. This we close. are this close to ending polio. This close to ending polio. All we need is you. Is you. Is you. This close. Be a part of history at rotary.org. Thank you for joining us today on Community Connection. And remember, the programs offered here at Children's and Women's Hospital not only offer the family comfort and ease, but it will ensure that your child will not miss out on his or her education. We'll see you next time. <laughs>